All right, I'm ready when you are. Okay. Auntie Dearest. So what are we <laughs> what are we talking about? I mean, what are we how are we starting? Uh let's just let's just start. Yeah, let's, let's do it. All right. Three, two, one. <laughs> Welcome back to our podcast, No More Secrets. As always, I'm your niece, Katie Albrecht. Still Katie Albrecht, huh? Mm-hmm. And I'm your aunt. To these people. Mary Albrecht. <laughs> to these people, yes. Yeah, I am it was, I got a, still an Albrecht. He's still an Albrecht. I got a, um, a card in the mail this week from Mr. and Mrs. Forsyth. And I thought, why are Matt's parents sending me something? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, wait, that's Katie, because <laughs> that's Volo. And I'm like, Mr. and Mrs. Forsyth. <laughs> right. That's so weird. I know. I made it very formal. It's weird that you're married, that you have a husband. Yeah, kind of. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little weird, but I guess I like it. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. It's probably not much. It's only been like six weeks. Yeah. It's not much different, you know, right? It's, yeah, no, there's not. You guys are, we're around, we're to. Well, hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> Make your entrance then. Wow, that was Bernie, you guys. As you see, I've got a, a dog here again. This dog is. Um, he wants to be known. <laughs> gotten, gotten very, very needy. Um, uh, there, He's got a an attachment disorder to me. He, he's full of separation anxiety when I even walk away. I create that in a lot of beings, including a cat. Right, Bernie? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Cats are so funny. Um, but yes, yeah, Dunkle's pretty needy and has a lot of stuff He's got a lot of things, on. and it's, it's been tra- traumatizing me this week, which is actually our topic. That's a good segue into our topic, because Katie and I are trauma both th- in therapy, yes. trauma therapy. Um, we are... It's interesting that we both ended up with different therapists, um, and both of them suggested different and more effective ways to heal the trauma uh, faster than just talking, Mm -hmm. you know, just talk therapy. Um, And so we were going to talk about that and compare our our therapies and talk about some of the things that we're going through with it, because it can be kind of draining. Like for me, Mm -hmm. I'm exhausted afterwards. Um, Mm -hmm. And... uh, But what I find interesting is that um, it says that, well, I, I had it all picked out for you guys. <laughs> and it says, most trauma therapies address the mind through talk and the molecules of the mind with drugs. Both of these approaches can be of use. However, trauma is not, will not, and can never be fully healed until we also address the essential role played by the body. We must understand how the body is affected by trauma and its central position in healing its aftermath. Without this foundation, our attempts at mastering trauma will be limited and one-sided. So the what I am uh, doing now is called somatic experiencing, and it was developed by Dr. Peter Levine, um, who uh, has been studying trauma for over 40 years. They actually called Dr. Levine's people in when the Twin Towers fell because they knew that they were going to be needing some really, really intense therapy to deal with the traumas, the people that witnessed the Twin Towers what, falling. This is your therapist? This is the uh, the oh. uh, person the person that invented the this therapy. Type of therapy yeah so my therapist is carolyn parker oh right but yeah she's we've a, talked about this yeah. she's a somatic experiencing expert you have to go through a three-year program yeah I think, I think it's about three years but it's really it's intense yeah and she is now working for she's not no longer working for youth and family counseling she's working for a different company that only does somatic experiencing and dr nice. dr levine's whole premise is that it i'll just read this to you it says Why are animals in the wild, though threatened routinely, rarely traumatized? Um, So what they're saying is like, if you think about it, an animal, not like a domesticated animal, but an animal in the wild, Mm -hmm. they are always under threat. Um, But they, if they can't run, you know, fight or flight, or they can't fight, they freeze. And Dr. Levine studied animals that are like there's a predator over there, they freeze, like a deer would freeze. Hmm. 
after the threat is gone, the animal, in this example, the deer, expels all that energy of having held it in. Hmm. So like they freeze. Think about like if you and I freeze, that's a lot of stress on the body. You're like kind of holding your breath and kind of tense in your body. Yeah. Animals actually expel it out afterwards. They they kind of like they start to shake. They go like a lot of and they get all of that nervous energy out of their body after the threat is gone whereas humans it's not socially hold, acceptable to do that yeah we hold on Especially to it on other people i mean if you're by yourself i feel like people will do that that's where kind of the panic attacks will come out and stuff but it's not as like but it's not instant so like let's sure. say you get in a car accident and then you think well i'm okay the car accident's over so just suck it up and you're fine but no yeah. you actually have to physically expel the the nervous energy that that got built up in your body yeah. during the trauma okay so so what somatic experiencing is so soma meaning body is that we talk about the trauma <laughs> <laughs> I'm, He's tra- like, I'm sorry are you guys busy i'm, tra- I'm traumatized by my animals <laughs> Friends, come here. okay okay good yeah. good talk good talk good kitty Okay, so somatic. See what you can do here. <laughs> um, soma meaning body. Mm-hmm. We introduce the traumatic topics, and then we physically expel the tension that is being arisen from the topics while talking about it. Okay. okay. And there's different ways to do that. There's different ways to expel it. You can do it through hypnosis. You can do it through breathing exercises, meditation, affirmation, massage, stretching, oh, all of that. And under that is EMDR as one of the ways to balance your brain and address the, the body, the physiology of the trauma while you're talking about it so that leads you to i know so like, <laughs> i can't do anything i can tell that you tried really hard not to <laughs> he's, focus on it he's fine he's he's just fine i'm fine i'm fine i don't notice this at all <laughs> these animals wanting everything from you one come of on. my come hang out with me one of my i like cats <laughs> my my uh vet one of my vets uh i said something to to her I said well at least spook isn't as loud as Bernie and she says nobody's as loud as Bernie <laughs> she's a, scared at the vet she's a vet he, oh he, he? it's 10 times that volume and he moans and howls and Aww. but the vet comes so bad when the, the vet happens. comes here though and he still is all dramatic you know and wow they really know <laughs> yeah exactly it's not like you're going to the vet where it's like a new place and everything and other animals yeah but. So anyway, so the EMDR. So uh, my question is that um, it's the eye movement yeah, um, it up just now. desensitization reprogramming, right? And reprocessing. Yeah. And reprocessing. Thing, yeah. So do you are you actually talking about your trauma while you're doing the eye movement? Yeah. So for those that don't know, I have started this. Um, I've done one session. So well, two sessions, but one session so far of the 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 rapid eye movement where. You basically take a metronome and you're um, you're going to the sound of the beat of looking back and forth like this, like across the room. You have two different focal po- points for it and everything. Is it across the room? Yeah. So they have to be on like complete opposite sides. So for instance, you can do like the, I don't know, this thing over here and then it, it just so that your head doesn't move. So then I just can look at the, the computer here. And you're doing this as you're going on this EMDR, and, and training. you're talking about your your whatever you want to talk about at that time. Well, the way, and I don't know if this is like universal. And truthfully, she hasn't really told me uh, like <laughs> why I'm doing all this. She just says like, "Okay, do this," and I'm like, it, it stresses me out. It started to stress me out in the in the beginning because I was like, I. I feel like I'm being quizzed for, for school and stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to say the wrong thing, you know? Like, oh, okay. But now I'm starting to, to kind of realize what's happening with it and stuff. Um, and it's, you start off by, it's not just like going through the memories. I mean, it is going through the memories, but you, you start to like work your way back to what you think your earliest um, memory is that it relates to whatever sort of trauma you're trying to fix. I just told her anxiety for mine and we we tried to go back 
um, further and further until you can kind of find a memory that was uh, the anxiety beginning. producing. Yes. The oldest memory of the, your anxiety? Uh, roughly. She roughly. said that it's like usually around like age six or seven or so. Um, for me, it was hard because it was like, I don't. Every time I go back and look at my history and I think, oh, this, I think of like, what's the most traumatizing experience? I can't think of one because they're, they're all. Because you had so many. I had a lot of them. <laughs> and I'm like, anytime I think of one, I'm like, oh yeah, that was bad. But oh, but this was worse. And then, but then this was worse. And I just don't have, I, I don't have that one defining moment, or at least I didn't think I did, of trauma or anxiety. Most, most, uh family situations it's the opposite you have like something where you fell and it was traumatic or you got in a bike in a crash or whatever whereas in Mm -hmm. our family it was the opposite it was every once in a while we would have a peaceful moment (laughs) yeah a little bit it was was a lot like that at least in my nucleus (laughs) that's how it was (laughs) we definitely had peaceful moments like we had good fun activities and stuff but there was a lot of trauma and um, finding one thing to define it all was uh, a challenge. We okay. took several sessions getting to that point. So you're actually talking about it while, so you're not looking at the therapist because your eyes are going back and forth, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah. So um, what it, what I was uh, told it, it was by my therapist is that specifically with EMDR therapy, you're trying to activate, you're trying to balance out your right and left hemispheres of your brain. See, this is the stuff I wasn't told. Yeah. So I'm glad that I'm like learning about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's interesting too. Of why I'm doing these things. Yeah. And so the trauma is usually stored in the, well, always stored on the right side because that's your side with emotion. That's your side with um, like fear and like, um, unpredictability whereas your left side is a very logical mathematical side okay Mm -hmm. so if you have anxiety it's on your right side so if you're talking about something that created anxiety your right side is dominating and the way that you get the left side to balance it out is to what you're doing is looking right and left so when you're looking right your left side is activating Hmm. and so the left side is the side of your brain that tells you you're okay you know that it's it's logical that you're traumatized by this, but you're okay. You're calm, you're gonna be fine. Um, it's it's all good. It's in the past, kind of hmm. thing. So you're balancing out your brain by doing that. There's other ways you can do that too, by um, switching, like doing a mathematical problem or doing a a Sudoku or a crossword puzzle or something, because you're using your left side while talk. But you have to do it while you're talking about the trauma that is causing the anxiety in this instance. Do you think um, people who have um, like sensory issues, like I'm thinking of like autistic pe- people with autism or like similar stuff, do you think that's part of the reason maybe they do that naturally? You know how sometimes they have their eye movements are kind of off and mm-hmm. stuff? Like maybe they are doing that naturally because they're they're – constantly trying to like tell themselves that it's like okay or something when you're switching from have you seen that where like people with some people that are not like that have some sensory um issues that they'll they kind of don't know where to look yes in fact um that's a really very good point i mean because steve okay got he got his full asperger's diagnosis on the autism spectrum Uh and the the psychiatrist said that his right side has too many pathways and his left side doesn't have enough okay and so um he reacts emotionally a lot to things but he's also obsessed with like languages and words that's all the left side so Mm -hmm. it's interesting that you say that because that probably calms him down by by obsessively studying words and language because then he's putting more pathways on his left side to balance out the right side. Hmm. That was really brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's that's where my mind was going was that like there are people out there that have trouble just focusing on one thing. Mm-hmm. Well, at first I was thinking like people with ADD also is right. very similar, but it almost makes more sense of someone who is doesn't have like all of the the sensory capabilities that we have to kind of always look for safety 
in a way, you know, like can, within it, your mind or whatever. It, it's balancing it out. It's the body's ability to balance, you know, and the right. brain, the brain's ability. And I think about you when I first got to know you, you did a lot of coloring while talking. Yeah. And that was that would <laughs> activate your left side, though. I mean, even though it's artistic, yeah. it wasn't really because you're not creating it. You're just coloring in lines, so it's very concrete. There was other times where I would doodle when people would talk, and I would, I would retain it better. Yeah. Growing yeah. up, anyway. So that's what you were doing, was balancing out your brain. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so you you did this this for the first time this past week? Yeah, I can for share the my experience major with it time. a little bit. So what happens there's two different mm -hmm. settings or there's more there's multiple settings you can do it on but or where i'm at right now is there's a slow calm state and then a faster rapid state and the calm state we first after we find that memory that of where this all can kind of stem from or one of them or whatever we find a memory or a, a recent time where i felt peace or felt like safe or or you know just like a really strong emotional um no matter how far back in this case just something that brings me peace okay and i think i mean my original thing was home i was like i feel peace when i'm at home on a saturday morning i'm reading a book my cat is on my lap i feel <laughs> that's like i'm maybe looking out the window a little bit <laughs> that's how matt says i read is that i'm looking out the window <laughs> <laughs> But for me, I'm just enjoying the whole experience. You know? You're like, not. How can you be like? You mean you look back and forth? Yeah. Okay. Claiming. Yeah. I I look out the window when I'm like thinking about what they said, or you know, just enjoy like enjoying the window. But anyway, um, that's where I said my piece was when I'm just when I'm at home. Okay. And I'm I was supposed to picture that with the slower, um, ticking. Okay. And I, um, you. You kind of take that to go back and then they like they go they dabble into like more um slow memory i mean like not as like uh intense memories i guess okay okay so then you start with that and then you kind of dive into it and start with the memory that you mentioned that is like the start so it's like a kind of sticking your toe in the water first before plunging in kind of yeah so what my therapist tells me to do is that it's kind of, it's more of you're, you're on a train and you're watching the memories go by and you're just letting them happen to you. Okay. And discovering them as you go and stuff. You do it for like segments of 10 to 15, I think it's like 20 seconds or something like that. And you just watch these memories go by and see where it takes you. And it'll probably take you to another memory and then another memory. And then so I started from that memory when I was six, seven years old and then I went up until even recently okay and where like after these these intervals that you take a breath and then you tell you talk about what you saw what you felt and then you just keep progressing and it was actually kind of cool because i i cried it was a lot mm. that's not the cool part <laughs> but um i was very t um it got really intense and I felt I felt all these feelings that I felt when I was a kid but then as I started to like become an adult as it got to the point of getting to adulthood um and even in like recent years I got to this point of like realizing of like yeah I've been through a lot but then I look at all this stuff that I've done and then I I ended the the I've movement the past I've movement with feeling like hopeful for the future i don't know if that happens for everyone but that's just because i i know that where i've been what i've done it's all leading to this like to a better tomorrow okay and i actually felt more hopeful with it interesting like i said i don't know if that's the case with everyone yeah. but the way my mind kind of rerouted itself was like okay yeah this is sad but and that sadness is always going to be there mm. but I do have a lot going for me. I have done a lot. Yes. And there's so much more. You got so much more and so many goals and passions and I yeah. and and positive things. You know, like you yeah. know, not not drudgery, like things that are actually fun to do and and passionate and you know, interesting. Right. Like our show. <laughs> right, like our our podcast and just I mean, 
even just day to day things like being able to sit at home with the cat on my lap, like is actually really nice with your husband. Yeah, <laughs> it's so strange. And then I, I, I don't know. I I started thinking. I think that's just how my brain started to to work with it. I don't know if that was the therapy working or my brain working. Yeah, the therapy. Um, but I had this tendency to to see to to move on. So it's interesting because as you got more into adulthood, you got more control too. Like you could start making your own choices. You weren't stuck being a kid and being told what to think and what to feel and, you know, just, you know, out of of control. When you're a kid, you you don't have any control. You just, you know, so it's funny that... You can start figuring out what you like and and all that. The fact that I get to learn what I like and... And have a voice uh, in it. It's you know? very new. And still. you're not wrong, you know, because you, cause you feel the way you feel. But it, there were so many times when you were told you were wrong with, when you would express how you would feel and as same with me. Right. With and you start Ken. to, well, this is very interesting. So my therapist this last week, she took a pen and she held it up. I can't get to it. <laughs> Dog. And my microphone. She says, this is what your mom did to you. She said, your mom showed you this pen and said this is a glass of water (laughs) that's exactly the analogy she used and then you said to your mom no that's a pen no it's a glass of water mary yeah and it's confusing very condescending to you don't you know this is a glass of water she said that was your whole upbringing you were taught not to trust what you thought you were seeing and I and she's purposely did pen and a glass of water because it's so ridiculous. But right. yet my mom was adamant, and if I didn't believe this was a glass of water, I was the bad guy. Mm-hmm. And um, that it's to me confusing. was fascinating. And you're as a kid, then you start to then she would get mad, and she hardly ever got mad at Ken, but she knew she could get mad at me because I could take it. I was strong, and also I was kind. You know, like I wouldn't like hurt her or whatever so but she would say well aren't you just a little know-it-all you little that you think this is a pen and then really condescending to me so then as a kid you start to feel like oh my god my mom hates me oh my god what if she kicks me out of the family like you don't want you just start to feel insecure so you start to agree that this is a glass of water right and then it wrecks havoc on and, your And then it takes body. forever to figure out what you really want, what mm-hmm. what it looks like to you to express it and not be ridiculed. Right. And that's only if you're surrounded by healthy people because it could still happen as an adult, you know? Yeah, I think you're a product of your environment, you know, as much as you could, as much as you are in control of your own self, your environment inf- heavily influences it every time. The, envir- the current environment. You mean, yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's why it's good for everybody for for health to to surround yourself with non toxic people, but especially for people like you and me, it's important mm-hmm. to surround ourselves with non toxic people because we had a lot of toxicity already. You know. So how right. much more can you take? And I I also had an aha moment this past week because I was t- talking to my therapist. So as far as we've gotten with the somatic experiencing all she's doing is talking to me and watching what happens to my body like she'll see me start to breathe more shallowly or all of a sudden I'll do like this or Mm. I'll be like this and I flex my foot and there's all this tension yeah and then then she's like can you can you just relax your foot and and then I keep telling the story Mm. you know but anyway I was telling her about my intestinal bleed um and it it was all about you know the it's where um, I was connected to my mom. It was my umbilical cord um, that didn't didn't flatten out in the womb, and I and it it's basically the connection. This is what I said to her. I said it's like the connection to my mom never healed, and she's like, "Whoa," because <laughs> she's like, "You haven't healed yourself because of your." lack of connection what what it should have been was a smooth uh, retraction of the umbilical cord and a smooth digestive system but instead 
my connection to my mom wreaked havoc on my life physically. Yeah. And she says, she thinks, you know, so I've had this intestinal bleed since 2006. She thinks if I really start facing how my mom let me down, like with especially things like this, water and pens, that my bleed might heal. Because I've never really, really dove, dove into, because I, I liked my mom and, and, and I, and I, I've never really. And you defended her too. Yeah, as a kid, especially. Like, I, I really, um, I like to say things like, you know, she was a good person. She was just in over her head and stuff like that. And Carolyn's like, are you sure? Are you sure she was a good person? When she's telling you this is a glass of water, that's not a good person. You know, and I said, well, maybe not a good parent. Anyway, so she said, once I really face the child in me that got let down by my mom, I might heal finally after 58 years. (laughs) What do you think facing her would look like? Would it look like accepting it for what it is? Would it look like forgiveness? Would it? it... Wow, that's a good question too. Because, I mean, it's just stuff to think about when you're, um, especially if it it tries to heal your body and everything, like your mind is going to come first you know? yeah I don't even know I mean forgiveness to me is I feel like something I've already done but I think I've I've forgiven in the wrong way I've forgiven not like the deep forgiveness or something. it's just yeah. like I oh you know it's in the past kind of thing where it's not because it's never been expelled you know um so I don't know what it would look like but I think there would be a lot of sadness and a lot of mourning that goes with me wanting so desperately to um, please my mom, yeah, and and really to not hurt her, and to say, okay, mommy, you're right. That pen is a glass of water. I'm sorry I hurt you, mm-hmm. kind of stuff. I think it would just be really painful to actually feel that. I can yeah. say it, but to feel it, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can understand that, and that's probably going to be like a dam breaking where it just floods and that's why she said we got to go real slow she's like because she didn't know all of the stuff you know yeah she read the book and all but she didn't realize that I also had all these major surgeries car accidents um yeah you know Terry dying poop the accidents. book was just a very <laughs> small part of our lives you know what I mean? it like, was such, <laughs> and it's so it was tragic a year really, I know. You know, the time frame of it of of the meat of it obviously we had flashbacks and stuff but the, it was less than a year time period of our life where all this stuff happened and she <laughs> and she said like the first time the first session i was with her I, <laughs> I shared with her so many of my traumas not just the book stuff and and she said Whole, she the next week she said I I was worried about you because I feel like you were sharing too much too fast like you just sort of like exploded with all of it and I said that wasn't all of it <laughs> I said, we can keep going <laughs> that was like ten percent <laughs> yeah that's that's interesting <laughs> and so we have that in common but I really find it interesting that that you and I both ended up in a different kind of therapy that is really more concrete than just talking yeah. I mean, with this therapist, um, I had been just talking with her for, I mean, it's been months. Okay. So I've had her for a long time, but she just recently got, um, uh, certified or whatever, or licensed or I don't even know what it is. She got certified in EMDR and Uh. said, oh, I think you'd be a good person to like, as I get better at this, to do this with and stuff. Okay. I, I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. Do you get a headache from doing that with your eyeballs? Um, I did when I started going too far. (laughs) <laughs> okay because that would be hard it was a little bit of a strain and she's like it doesn't have to be all the way on the end of the room just make sure it's like opposite sides kind of thing okay so just wow that drives me crazy yeah doing and it <laughs> this is i struggled so hard with it be- at the beginning not because of the memories but because i couldn't get memories because i was so <laughs> focused on this like <laughs> I literally couldn't think of anything else because it was all, it took all of my focus. And it's super funny looking too, (laughs) to watch you do it. I can't imagine what I looked like. (laughs) I'm sure I can watch this back and see this. It's um, really funny looking. Yeah, and she's sitting there watching me. It's really uncomfortable when (laughs) when you're just... (laughs) I should play this. Wait, hang on. Let me play the metronome of how fast your eyes go back. It changes speeds though, right? Depending on what you're talking about. 
Yeah, you do the slow speed for the relaxed state. So when you think of your peace <laughs> word. So this is at the 141. This is what I, I move my eye movements to. I'll play it for people. Okay, ready? Okay. Oh my god. That's what oh. I'm saying. Okay. I cannot. I could not think of anything else except for, okay, this way, this way, this way. Like, it was hard. You guys all hear that? That was really fast. Yeah. Okay. And then right, the, right. the rest state. See? Even he got all... I felt like I was getting anxious just from the, the, yeah, yeah. the beat. Yeah, he felt it. Okay, so... And then the rest state. I'll, I'll show you what the, the rest state is like. Oh, even this is, like, too slow now. I'm like... It makes me a little bit anxious hearing it. Because I want it to go faster. Yeah, you kind of your eye wants my eye wants to go right before it's ready. <laughs> yeah, so I can see I can understand where it's going. I think it is good that I face this again, and I feel like yeah. I have faced it a lot. Yeah. Um. But I I do know that it still affects me in like ways today that I probably haven't dealt with. Yeah, like there's there's just things that you don't realize that it it affects you. And that's a um, another episode we want to do is talking about our triggers, triggers, and what to do. Triggered. <laughs> yeah, what do we it's do? A hot with buzzword these days. I feel like, but I think it's important that we talk about it because it's, it's it's. And what do relevant. we do? And what do we do about them? And I think that might be one of our next episodes because um, I've been triggered a lot lately by my animals, um, just with their bodily, their old bodies, because I took care of so many old sick bodies. Yeah. And uh, and it's just a huge trigger, and it's not real healthy. Um, I need to figure out where to go with it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to my therapist about what happened yesterday, this week when he had diarrhea all over, made me. Think of grandpa walking around pooping all over. I, I just witnessed some of it too, which is kind of gross. My, yeah, I can't. Mm. <laughs> I, get a gag. I mean, I get used to it because obviously I do litter boxes and stuff for Lando, but mm. you get used to it. And I've nannied before and, and all that. Ugh. But the first couple times, I always have a gag reflex with a new like being. And I'm like, I can't even look it, at it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's really gross. Yeah, poor guy. He was so scared, too, and I had to rush him to the vet. Um, right, no, it was... Because he was, he thing. got stuck. He got, so he has problems with his fur growing across, and then it gets uh, dried. Some of the poo dries on his fur, and then eventually it blocks him. Mm -hmm. And then the diarrhea just kind of goes around it, but he's got a, he had a poop hanging out of his bo body like that, and he was running around crying, like, you know, how he cries. This is what the people want to hear. Yeah, it was a really, really <laughs> awful. It was awful. It was so awful. And so, um, yeah, I'm not going to say anymore. I'm going to relive it. I need to do it in the, in a therapeutic setting, <laughs> you know. Right. Oh, in a control setting. But I love him, and I'll, I'll fix whatever I can for him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway so um yeah i think it's it's a really interesting this is the book by dr peter levine called waking the tiger and it talks about how tigers handle trauma they um cubs little cubs if they feel threatened they often replay it after the threat is gone like with their brothers and sisters like that one of them chases the other one and then the the other one gets away or the other one laughs or the other one, you know, well, doesn't laugh, but like playful, like kind of, you know, hee hee. Okay, this reminds me of a friend of mine in college who called, had this phrase called staircase wit. And I don't know why she called it this specifically, but it's like when you go, when you, you're in a situation that you wish you would have said something different and then after that person leaves that you have the situation with, you think of all these things that you could should have said. <laughs> I feel like it's very similar where you're like, you think of all these things that you should have like said. Like you in replay this situation. it to the way that you would want it to have gone. Or like something really funny that you wish you would have said. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, Why didn't I? Why does she call it staircase though? I have no idea. I'll like ask maybe her the, the person, next time I see her, but... Maybe the person's like already going down the staircase when you think of it, or you're she, going down the staircase. She told me this, but I was, you know, 20 years old, so I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I remember thinking it was like, oh, yeah, I have that all the time, you know? But yeah, similar. I feel like a lot of people have that, whatever you want to call it, you think of things 
after the situation occurs where you wish you would have done it differently yes yes exactly and that and they even do it in nature they replay it to end it safely. That's really Isn't cute. that neat? That's adorable. That and little cubs are doing that. Yeah. I don't know why. That's it, so it's, cute. And um, it says, um, waking the tiger normalizes the symptoms of trauma and the steps needed to heal them. The reader is taken on a guided tour of the subtle yet powerful impulses that govern our responses to overwhelming life events. To do this, it employs a series of exercises that help us focus on bodily sensations. Through a heightened awareness of these sensations, trauma can be healed. It's really interesting. So I highly recommend this book. Perhaps we could get him to sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> or Speaking of which, or, um, support us on Patreon. <laughs> or, or subscribe. We can get him to subscribe to Patreon. I, I might reach out to him. Okay. I might reach out to uh, Matthew Perry, too. Uh, great. <laughs> love it yeah why not here i'd love to meet him um it's a not-for-profit organization okay but seriously support us on patreon (laughs) yeah we're we're actually begging at this point because we really want to uh, be able to do a lot more with this podcast and we need to have the support so we're not embarrassed to ask slash beg (laughs) please no i'm just kidding (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> get down on our knees <laughs> all right well till next time everybody i think that was a good episode we've got a lot of other ideas to come so stay tuned we've got some guests coming and yeah and if you've um done any sort of trauma therapy emdr or somatic is what you're is somatic what, experiencing somatic is experiencing let us know in the comments um we'd love to hear about it about it, other people's experiences with it absolutely so yep we can all learn from each other Peace and love. love. (laughs) And that's from Reverend Mary. (laughs) And the bride. (laughs) The Reverend and the pumpkin, remember? Yeah, the Reverend and the pumpkin, yeah. (laughs) The Reverend and the bride. Yeah. Well, until next time. um, Toodaloo. Bye. (laughs) Bye.